Like the Apollo 15 subsatellite, PFS-2 was expected to have a lifetime of at least a year before its orbit decayed and it crashed onto the lunar surface. The decision to bring Apollo 16 home early after there were difficulties with the main engine meant that the spacecraft did not go to the orbit which had been planned for PFS-2. Instead, it was ejected into a lower-than-planned orbit and crashed into the moon a month later on May 29, 1972, after circling the moon 424 times. This brief lifetime was because lunar mascons were near to its orbital ground track and helped pull PFS-2 into the moon. Elements of the spacecraft and launch vehicle began arriving at Kennedy Space Center in July 1970, and all had arrived by September 1971. Apollo 16 was originally scheduled to launch on March 17, 1972. This issue, in combination with concerns that one of the explosive cords that would jettison the LM from the CSM after the astronauts returned from the lunar surface would not work properly, and a problem with Duke's spacesuit, made it desirable to slip the launch to the next launch window. The launch vehicle stack, which had been rolled out from the vehicle assembly building on December 13, 1971, was returned there too on January 27, 1972. It was rolled out again to launch Complex 39A on February 9. The official mission countdown began on Monday, April 10, 1972, at 8.30 a.m., six days before the launch. At this point the Saturn V rocket's three stages were powered up, and drinking water was pumped into the spacecraft. As the countdown began, the crew of Apollo 16 was participating in final training exercises in anticipation of a launch on April 16. The only holds in the countdown were the ones pre-planned in the schedule, and the weather was fair as the time for launch approached. He Apollo 16 mission launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 12.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 16, 1972. The launch was nominal, the crew experienced vibration similar to that on previous missions. The first and second stages of the Saturn V performed nominally, the spacecraft entered orbit around Earth just under 12 minutes after liftoff. The crew spent time adapting to the zero-gravity environment and preparing the spacecraft for translunar injection, the burn of the third-stage rocket that would propel them to the moon. In Earth orbit, the crew faced minor technical issues, including a potential problem with the environmental control system and the SIVB third stage's attitude control system, but eventually resolved or compensated for them as they prepared to depart towards the moon. The rocket's third stage reignited for just over five minutes, propelling the craft towards the moon at about 35,000 km per hour. Six minutes after the burn of the SIVB, the command and service modules, containing the crew, separated from the rocket and traveled 49 feet away from it before turning around and retrieving the lunar module from inside the expended rocket stage. The maneuver, performed by Mattingly and known as transposition, docking, and extraction, went smoothly. Following transposition and docking, the crew noticed the exterior surface of the lunar module was giving off particles from a spot where the LM skin appeared torn or shredded. At one point, Duke estimated they were seeing about 5 to 10 particles per second. Young and Duke entered the lunar module through the docking tunnel connecting it with the command module to inspect its systems, at which time they did not spot any major issues. Once on course towards the moon, the crew put the spacecraft into a rotisserie barbecue mode in which the craft rotated along its long axis three times per hour to ensure even heat distribution about the spacecraft from the sun. After further preparing the craft for the voyage, the crew began the first sleep period of the mission just under 15 hours after launch. By the time Mission Control issued the wake-up call to the crew for Flight Day 2, the spacecraft was about 181,000 kilometers away from the Earth, traveling at about 1,622 meters per second. As it was not due to arrive in lunar orbit until Flight Day 4, Flight Days 2 and 3 were largely preparatory, consisting of spacecraft maintenance and scientific research. On Day 2, the crew performed an electrophoresis experiment, also performed on Apollo 14, in which they attempted to demonstrate that electrophoretic separation in their near-weightless environment could be used to produce substances of greater purity than would be possible on Earth. Using two different sizes of polystyrene particles, one size colored red and one blue, separation of the two types via electrophoresis was achieved, though electroosmosis in the experiment equipment prevented the clear separation of two particle bands. The remainder of Day 2 included a two-second mid-course correction burn performed by the CSM Service Propulsion System engine to tweak the spacecraft's trajectory. Later in the day, the astronauts entered the lunar module for the second time to further inspect the landing craft's systems. The crew reported they had observed additional paint peeling from a portion of the LM's outer aluminum skin. Despite this, the crew discovered that the spacecraft's systems were performing nominally.
Following the LM inspection, the crew reviewed checklists and procedures for the following days in anticipation of their arrival in the lunar orbit insertion burn. Command module pilot Mattingly reported, gimbal lock, meaning that the system to keep track of the craft's attitude was no longer accurate. Mattingly had to realign the guidance system using the sun and moon. At the end of day 2, Apollo 16 was about 260,000 kilometers away from Earth. When the astronauts were awakened for flight day 3, the spacecraft was about 291,000 kilometers away from the Earth. The velocity of the craft steadily decreased, as it had not yet reached the lunar sphere of gravitational influence. The early part of day 3 was largely housekeeping, spacecraft maintenance and exchanging status reports with mission control in Houston. The crew performed the Apollo Light Flash Experiment, or ALFMED, to investigate light flashes that were seen by Apollo lunar astronauts when the spacecraft was dark, regardless of whether their eyes were open. This was thought to be caused by the penetration of the eye by cosmic ray particles. During the second half of the day, Young and Duke again entered the lunar module to power it up and check its systems, and perform housekeeping tasks in preparation for the lunar landing. The systems were found to be functioning as expected. Following this, the crew donned their spacesuits and rehearsed procedures that would be used on landing day. Just before the end of flight day 3 at 59 hours, 19 minutes, 45 seconds after liftoff, while 330,902 kilometers from the Earth and 62,636 kilometers from the Moon, the spacecraft's velocity began increasing as it accelerated towards the Moon after entering the lunar sphere of influence. After waking up on flight day 4, the crew began preparations for the LOI maneuver that would break them into orbit. At an altitude of 20,635 kilometers the scientific instrument module bay cover was jettisoned. At just over 74 hours into the mission, the spacecraft passed behind the moon, temporarily losing contact with mission control. While over the far side, the SPS burned for 6 minutes and 15 seconds, breaking the spacecraft into an orbit with a low point of 58.3 and a high point of 170.4 nautical miles. After entering lunar orbit, the crew began preparations for the descent orbit insertion maneuver to further modify the spacecraft's orbital trajectory. The maneuver was successful, decreasing the craft's paracynthian to 19.8 kilometers. The remainder of flight day 4 was spent making observations and preparing for activation of the lunar module, undocking, and landing the following day. The crew continued preparing for lunar module activation and undocking shortly after waking up to begin flight day 5. It was decided that Young and Duke would visually inspect the boom after undocking the LM from the CSM. They entered the LM for activation and checkout of the spacecraft systems. With the preparations finished, they undocked 96 hours, 13 minutes, 31 seconds into the mission.